Gamers, I want to have a little chat about Shorekeeper because she is exceptionally good and versatile. But is she power creep in Wuthering Waves? Is she so OP that you have to pull her? Is she so game breaking that if you don't pull her, you're an idiot? Let's have a chat. So I want to talk about the pros here. I want to talk about the one con, but for the most, for the most part, it's actually not a con depending on who you have. This is a very, very good versatile unit. Okay, so let's talk about the main stuff here. Understood. You're going to want a bunch of energy regen on this character, 250%. So if you're going into your echoes here, you probably want to start going for some energy regen echoes. You maybe want to get some healing percentage here, but you want to look for energy regen. HP percentage are going to be your key things because that's how she scales. That's how she gives you the most value on your team. The reason why you want as much energy regen as humanly possible here, 250 uh, as a minimum, two reasons. Reason number one, her ultimate has a 30 second duration, but only a 25% or 25 second cooldown. So if we can get her energy regen up, we can get this field out for the mass majority of the battle, which means you are permanently benefiting, healing, and giving your team damage because her, her ultimate not only is it going to be constantly healing everyone in the field, and it's a massive field, no one's dying. On top of that, it takes a percentage of your energy regen, and it gives you crit rate up to 12.5% at the start. But every unit that is using an intro skill within it is going to upgrade it up until you're getting up to 25% crit damage bonus here. So you're getting a crit rate bonus... And then you're getting a crit damage bonus on top. This is absolute juice. Okay? Throw this on any character, and you're now scaling that with all of their elemental stuff, all their attack. That is very, very nice. And depending on the DPS that you're using, like this Gian here, he's at 51% crit rate. If you're using any food buffs against some of the bosses in the game, like the, like the new Infernal Rider, you're using a food buff, and you're using this field, all of a sudden you're like 100% crit rate. You're cracked out of your mind, okay? So, understood. Shorekeeper, I am here to huge AoE field. I'll show you in a second. Huge AoE field, always healing, giving you crit. But the other big juicy thing, oh my god. Not only does she have this bad boy, so she's going to send out these little butterflies when she does her, her uh, outro skill. She's got these butterflies that are going to follow you around. And this allows you to dodge after you've already been hit. So it's essentially a, oops, I made a mistake. I got tagged by that morning AX flying in. You can press the dodge and you'll recover from that hit. If you get launched into the air by an enemy, you can dodge out of it. If you time it really, like right after, you can dodge out of it and save yourself from being juggled in the air and all this other stuff. Um, on top of this though, this is a 15% a damage amp for any element in the game. Any DPS, any sub-DPS can use this. And like other super strong units, like Verena, this is not going to fall off if you swap. So if you're using Shorekeeper into Yin Lin, you can do a nice big rotation. You can start giving her some extra crit rate and value. You can use Yin Lin to get her ultimate off and, and, and build up her outro skill. And then she's going to outro into your main DPS, like um, Shangling Yao, or whatever his name is. <laughs> and he's going to now have even more boosted stats. He's going to get the outro skill of Yin Lin and the outro skill of Shorekeeper. And you're going to stack them both up and you're going to go ham on them in your ultimate for like another 15 seconds. It's so crispy. On top of that, Shorekeeper will tank a hit for you, essentially, uh, instead of dying you will be saved using this where it's going to take 50% of her HP and it's going to give you it to keep you alive. Now, Verena's, I think it shields you. It's, it's also pretty juicy, but this is just one-to-one -one as good as Verena's passive, which is important because Verena is a good unit, a very good unit, but Shorekeeper just does the same thing and potentially more, Okay. And then finally, um, if you just get this final one, you're getting a little bit energy energy regen, but then the rover is also getting energy regen if you're on the team. But this is not element-based. It doesn't have to be the spectral one. It just has to be the rover. So 
Dark Rover is pretty damn good. And, uh, you know, down the road, if we get other elements, could be super juicy as well. So that's the main thing. As for the skills and all these different things, she's got a ton of healing on everything she does. Intro skills, outro skills, ultimate skills. She's got some way of keeping you alive with the dodge mechanic, with the healing. She's very good at doing this. So if I look at this character and I look at what she's bringing to the table, it's just value in every fight, every character, every team comp, she can be used. So that is good. However, honestly, so can Verena. Verena has a damage amp for everybody. She's got some good healing. She can keep you alive. You don't need this unit. But you might want this unit. You might want this unit because Tower Adversity is always going to have two teams... And you're probably going to want some sort of healing or some some way to sustain. But what Shorekeeper does, in my opinion, is she does Verena's job of keeping you alive, which is kind of a necessity, so you're not getting one-shot by some of these annoying bosses in the, in the higher tiers. She's keeping you alive, but what she's doing and excelling is this damage buff. She's now that next tier up. And so I think that she power creeps Verena, but you're still going to need Verena because there's no other good supports that are on this level. I think that both of those supports are still better than everyone else in the game because we only have those two, really. And the other characters that can maybe fill that role are not doing it as good. Not even close. So I picked her up. I'm happy with her. I've got her. I'm going to use her. And I am considering getting her weapon just so that I have it. But do you need her weapon as well? I think that's the, the next big thing. Do you actually need this bad boy? It's giving you a bunch of energy regen, 77% at level 90, which allows you to use her passive easier. That's cool. She gives extra HP here, which helps with her healing. But unfortunately, this is not a universal weapon that is going to impact Verena. That being said, if I had to guess, and if I had to gamble, I'm thinking that this will work on some other unit down the road. But for right now, you can't get the um the attack bonus for your team with Verena and the HP percentage doesn't increase Verena's healing it only increases her sustain uh, ability of herself and not dying that being said the base attack will be higher which does impact Verena as well so it's it's kind of like it works but it's never going to be the maximum and so then we have to start looking at the other effects it's going to be giving you concerto energy when you use your ultimate but variation, let me just show you here. I'm just going to leave this quickly. Variation may be more universally good and valuable. And a maxed out variation, even on Shorekeeper, it might be the strat. Understood. It might be the strat. If we look at variation, it does have a lot of energy regen. And we can get more when we level this up. But we're already 20% below the five-star weapon. We're also 50 attack lower, or, or almost 60 attack lower, 55 attack lower. So we're losing some energy regen, but if you can get to 250 with some of your um, some of your echoes, then you're chilling. However, when using your resonant skill, you're going to gain concerto energy. 12 concerto energy. So realistically, all you're missing out on is a little bit of HP, and you're missing out on that potential attack bonus, but only for her. Variation is... Very, very good for Verena. It's better in some cases. Uh, it's easy to use. Verena, like, honestly, I I don't think I would be pulling the weapon for Verena and swapping between them if I had a maxed out variation because this thing can get even better and I can get even more. Uh, I can get up to 16 every time I cast that resonance skill. And so I, I think that if you can make up for the energy regen in your echoes, um... I, I think I'm just going to stick with this thing. I, I think I'm, I would rather save for a very game-changing DPS weapon for my account. That being said, I could also get really lucky and I could just get this on my on my shorekeeper and then I've got a crack shorekeeper and she carries my account. Or I just or I just don't get lucky. That is that is also that is also something that could happen. I just don't get lucky. But hypothetically, uh, I would want it. So, Understood. my final impressions are 
I can't wait to fully build this character. I have no shell credits to level her up, but I'm going to be pretty much maxing her out as soon as I can. Uh, or at least getting her to like 60 or 70. And I think for right now, I'm just going to use the variation on her and hopefully I can get some more copies of it. But I'm just going to use this. I'm going to trade this weapon between Verena and her. And I'm just going to make my account as comfortable as possible. But the nice thing about this character is even though... Um, even though she is maybe going to be a little bit lower level than my Verena, her overall healing, I think, is going to be a lot better and safer. Because there's one thing that frustrates me about Verena, and it's actually one reason why I want to swap off her. With Verena, her healing is, is based on her forte. I'm ready. And it's based on having these charges and doing these, these attacks or these, these attacks. And... In some panic situations, I hate it. I hate diving in on the enemy and using this to heal or jumping in the air and locking myself in an animation to heal. I despise that feeling. And with Shorekeeper, a lot of her healing is super passive. Understood. It is on field all the time. Or I go like this, I press the button, I can dodge out of it, and I still got a heal off. It is fast, it is snappy, it is good. Understood. And so for me, I, um, I think that she's going to be the better character overall. Overall, I, I don't know why I would use Verena for anything other than Tower of, of Adversity at this time. But now is the time for the one caveat to that. Because depending on who you have and the DPS units that you're using, you might change your tune. And the best example of that is Jinsi. So Jinsi wants coordinated attacks from other people. And with Verena, maybe you don't know this. I know that there's a lot going on. But with Verena, when you use her ultimate, she will do coordinated attacks. So so she's she's giving you um, you know damage with her outro skill, super super valuable you know outro skill. She's got these heals, and then she's doing these, these coordinated attacks. And so if you're using Jinsi, which I haven't even built mine fully yet, you may want to save Verena for this team. But for pretty much every other DPS in the game, I think, I think Shorekeeper is just the I'm new queen. She's the new will. support. She's going to be in every team. I'm going to be running around. I'm going to be using her. And uh, that's, that's just what it is. Now, the other thing... Because of the, the way the intro skills and the outro skills work, you're going to get a little bit more mileage out of her uh, if you have a team comp that is going to uh, have an optimal rotation for this. Okay? So what I mean by that is you're placing down your ultimate with her, the field is on the ground, and then you're using someone like Yin Lin who can do her own damage, has her own value, is like the kind of the sub DPS, is, is, is kind of the person that's starting the comp up and running. And with, with someone like Yin Lin and this comp, she is boosting uh, Electro damage, and she's got Resonance Liberation damage, and she's got some other, you know, passive damage that's going out. She's going to benefit a lot from that field. And then you come out with your big boy who's getting boosted from Yin Lin, and it's, it's this, like, stacking team comp that when you finally swap over to your main DPS, you're critting. Crit damage. Hitting hard. You're full HP. You can stay on field. You're 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 healing the whole time. It is such a juicy combo. And so, like, a another example would be, I guess, like, um, maybe like Encore and what is it, Chang Li? I can't remember her name. The new Fire Girl. Her and then Shorekeeper. And there's gonna be more elements of that coming down the road as you go, right? There's the Jeji. She's going to be, you know, a crazy ice support. Right now, a lot of people are using Jeji with, with her. But, you know, down the road, there's going to be someone else who's even better. And again, it's going to be Shorekeeper into the sub DPS support, into the main DPS. And it's going to be, it's going to be juicy. So anyways, that's what I see. That's what I'm doing. I'm loving her up right away. She's going to be a mainstay in the account. Part of me wants to pull for her weapon, but I don't know if I really actually need it. Uh, but we do have a lot of pulls, so I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, uh, I'll get baited in. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right. I'm gonna go rub some mayo all over my body, boys. Stream is done, and- Oh, God, I didn't stop the video. Oh, what?